Good morning. The topic today is everything will be put under Christ. Everything in heaven and earth will be united under Christ. Notice the word under Christ. This is in 1 Corinthians. I'll share that with you later on. But know that everything that's happening in this world now, God is working powerfully and mightily to bring the, the, uh, the unity of everything, heavens on earth, to be under Christ. So now, if you don't know Christ personally, that is, you'll be at greatly disadvantaged. <laughs> you'll be in problem, may I suggest. You know, now, you know, Halloween's coming out. I'm looking at, at, at the different places, the houses, some decorations. People know about Halloween, which is, which is pretty much a fable. And yet, do people know about the person that every one of us needs to understand and know? And that is Christ. Because everything, good, bad, evil, glorious, dark, will all be united under Christ. So let's, let's unpack that. Right? I want to unpack that in Ephesians 3. Verse 10, okay? Starting from verse 10. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. First, first it was the, uh, the, the Paul was talking about, he is the least, um, less, least less than the least of all the Lord's people. The grace was given to him to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery. There's a mystery that's been kept forever. You know what the mystery is? The division of the Jews and Gentiles how God is going to unite them. Hallelujah. That is the mystery. The mystery has been kept for cen centuries, centenaries, thousands of years. You know, without knowing that, we'll be walking in ignorance. Okay? So verse 9, Ephesians 3 verse 9, And to make plain the administration of this mystery, which to for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. So God hide, God hid all this from the world, from Abraham, from Isaac, from David, from you name it, from all that is in the world, in the Old Testament, you know, from uh, Samuel, name it, all the great prophets. From Moses even. But even though God told Abraham, in you and through you, all nations will be blessed. The word all includes Gentiles and, 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 and the Jewish. And Jewish means his natural descendants, descendants. So all. You know, God obviously didn't promise Abraham in Genesis 12. Only the Jews and Israelites, Abraham's descendants, natural descendants, will be blessed. In fact, in Christ, that's, that's the mystery of God. In Christ, all the Gentiles who believe in Christ become the spiritual children of Abraham and become partakers of the Abrahamic covenant blessings. Hallelujah. Because Christ is greater than Abraham. Absolutely. Yeah, put it another way, Christ, Jesus created Abraham. I don't think anybody can dispute that. <laughs> so so that's the that's the whole deal about how it works. Okay, God continued to work to, uh, to to now how does God uh, make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery? The mystery of God. How? Through the church. Oh wow. So let's check that out. Verse 10, his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. 
according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. What is the revelation of the mystery? That revelation of the mystery is accomplished, is revealed through our Lord Jesus Christ. How? Okay, let me bring up the New Living Translation clearer. Verse 10, God's purpose in all of this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its, in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. The wisdom of God. How, how, how deep and is the wisdom of God, the power of God. And that was all he did. And that was being reviewed. This was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, in Jesus, through Jesus, in Jesus, the mystery was unpacked, decode. Everything is revealed. So what is what is that mystery plan? Okay, let's just get to the meat of it. Okay, so so the so God God has revealed, you know, He said through the church, the manifold wisdom should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. Rulers and authorities. Let me bring out the ESV. God might be made known, God's wisdom may be made known to the rulers and authorities as well. Same thing. So, who are the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places? Okay, let me bring out New American Standard, <laughs> close to the King James. So, the multifaceted, same thing, to the heavenly places. Okay, let's get to it. Given Carson's uh, commentary here, given God's incredible work of reconciling two hostile groups into one organic body, the church is the perfect means to display God's wisdom. You see what I'm saying? This is completely making sense. Because you, you notice that if you read, if you remember, when Jesus gave out his breath on the cross, the final minute on the cross he gave up his spirit in other words his spirit departed from his body physical but that moment when that happens that 20 feet 30 feet probably 30 feet or more high thick currents that divide the most holy inner sanctuary most holy place in the temple and the rest of the temple was torn right from the top, 30 foot down, whack, bang. And the, there was an earthquake shaking everything at that point of time. So much so the one of the Roman centurions looking at the cross and, and the ground being shaken. And he remarked, he's a Roman centurion or commander. He's not a Christian, he's not Jewish. It's not a follower of Christ at that moment. And he said, truly this is the Son of God. Check it out. Guys, if you, even if you don't believe in Christ now, you want to believe in yourself. Think about this Roman centurion, who is the power, who believe in himself, who believe in Caesar, who believe in his Roman Empire and the glory and everything. When he saw, when he witnessed all these things, he was shaken and trembled. Truly, this is the Son of God. So, the curtain was torn at that point in time. You know what that means? That means a division between the most holy place and the common place has been abolished by Christ, in Christ, hallelujah. Because of Christ's atonement, there is no more separation. People can come to God directly now. You don't have to go through the high priest. You don't have to go through the high priest or the priest to, to God. That's why, that's why you can make confession to, to the Lord Jesus directly yourself. You don't need to make confession through um, your priest, like the Catholic Church does. You know, you go straight through to God. 
you know Christ is our intercessory he's our high he's our he's our ultimate high priest of the rank of Melchizedek the Bible says in the book of Hebrews so the division not only separate separate the commonplace and the most holy place in the temple but it also separates the holy and the non-holy non-holy you know in the temple there's holy place only the Jewish the the ritual clean Jews can enter and the Gentiles sell the chicken and lamb and and the sheep outside you know like one is that Jesus went in and overturned all those tables money exchanges etc so that's what's happening those are the Gentiles Gentiles can never get in there so now with the death of Christ the curtains was torn supernaturally not by the high priest not by the Jewish Pharisees Jeffrey would, would, would never dream they freaked out that the fact that the curtain is torn not by the Romans they knew nothing about it at that moment God tore that curtains what is saying symbolizes metaphorically figuratively saying that there's no more separation between man and God that you can go straight to God and there's no more separation between Gentiles and Jews all are in one in all in under Christ in Christ under one family of God in Christ Jesus hallelujah that's the power of God there's a huge display of the power of God that is the mystery okay so and now you know so God used the church, made known through the church, to who? To the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. The rulers and authorities are used to think only the principalities of darkness, the powers of darkness, demonic forces. No, Carson's right. This is actually the good powers and the bad powers, evil powers. And I was right about that. The demonic hosts they begin to realize that this is uniting the Jews and the Gentiles, everybody under one family through Christ. But also the good cosmic powers, spiritual powers in the heavenly places, which are the angels. Remember in First Peter, you know, the gospel was hidden for ages, and even the angels longed to look into it. Angels didn't know about this mystery until the day the curtain was torn now they know wow this is the mystery that God has kept to himself to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit you see that is such an astounding fact the fact that God wants to send a message of the greatest mystery of love and reconciliation and his worldwide plan that's what he's doing, okay? Evil powers are reminded that God's plan of uniting all things under Christ has decisively begun and the final defeat is imminent. And I thought that is absolutely true and absolutely great. Okay, so let me read to you a couple of verses. 1 Peter 1 12. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you in these things they now have been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Things into which angels long to look. Angels long to look. Now the evil powers are reminded that God's plan of uniting all things under Christ. Ephesians 1 9 to 10. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he set forth in him regarding his plan of the fullness of times to bring all things together in Christ things in the heavens and things on the earth in him we will also have obtained inheritance having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things in accordance with the plan of his will. To that end, we who were the first to hope in the Christ 
will be first to hope in the Christ will be to the praise of his glory. Okay, so, so the devils and the demonic angels are reminded that in the fullness regarding God's plan, good morning, in the fullness of time, in the fullness of time, whose time? In the fullness of God's time. There's a timing for everything, especially big items, big agenda like this. This is one of the largest agenda in God's calendar, which is to reconcile all things under heaven, in heaven, in heaven even, and on earth, to be under Christ, unite under Christ. Okay? And then, and then the, the evil demonic powers and Satan himself are all reminded that God's plan of united all things under Christ has begun. And the final defeat, the final defeat of the devil and his demonic angels is imminent. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 15, 24. Then comes to the end. When Christ hands over the kingdom to our Father, God and our Father, when he has abolished all rule and all authority and power for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet the last enemy to be def is defeated is death okay and uh, that will happen all this to be subject unto Christ and God the Father and that is eternal plan of God. Verse 11 says, according to his eternal purpose, the redemption that God purposed in Christ originated in eternity past, predestined. It's already been predestined. Did you know that your salvation, if you are saved today, you're predestined by God. It's not your work. Okay, so all this according to the plan of God, exactly. The church is not a hastily devised plan in response to Israel's failure. <laughs> Hallelujah, I love this. Cousins comment against first class. The church is not a hastily devised plan after the failure of Israel. The church of Jesus Christ is not plan B. The church of Jesus Christ is the plan even before the foundation of the earth, even before Adam and Eve were created. In eternity past, God in Hebrews, I think Hebrews, the Bible says God has already preordained that the Son of God, Christ, shall be offered, shall be sacrificed to redeem the fallen mankind, human beings, back to himself and the kingdom of God for all eternity, uniting all things under Christ. That is a glorious picture. That's the glory. That's why the Bible says the other day I put out a video about don't don't just pursue eternal life. And there's a verse. It's so beautiful. I need to write an article on that. It says pursue honor, glory, and immortality. Hallelujah. Three things. Everybody's going after eternal life, which is immortality. But going for glory and honor in Christ Jesus. Okay, guys, all things will be united under Christ. Amen.